Well, I think this year at IBC, everybody is really trying to figure out how they really go serious on their digital media strategy. I mean, most of the organizations here have been experimenting with getting digital content online, and now they're really starting to put the premium stuff online, they're starting to put up paywalls, they're starting to figure out how to really monetize content. It's not an experiment anymore, it's becoming more mainstream. So what are some of the key, I mean, and now there's this whole called, you know, the multi-screen, TV everywhere, um, you know, speaking for the um, broadcasters, TV companies who are looking to linear distribution, what are their concerns and what are the products that they're looking for? Sure. Well, the things that they're trying to do is first, obviously, get the content on as many screens as possible. And that's trickier than it sounds because a whole set of technological challenges. But it's not just about getting the content to play back. It's being able to protect the content so that it can't be stolen. And that requires navigating a really complicated set of security and DRM technologies because it's different on you know phones than it is on tablets and it is on set-top boxes. So that's really tricky. The other thing that people are struggling with is how to monetize their content, either through paywalls and paid media approaches or through advertising. And the advertising execution in a, in a multi-screen environment can get really tricky as well. Doing mid-roll ads and, and executing you know, ad pods and other type of more sophisticated advertising strategies is you know, easier to do on a PC than it is to do on a device today. And so that's another challenge that I think people are really struggling with and something that we're trying to help organizations with. Well, as we, you know, just we're talking about with multi-screen uh, delivery, you need to secure the content across many different screens. And for some time, we've offered support for the flash access DRM technology, and that's great for anywhere where there's flash as available. But unfortunately, more and more today on devices uh, in the living room and in, you know, your, your hand, there's not uh, that option. And so people want to be able to have DRM that works on these other types of devices. Now, Widevine is a DRM technology that's been adopted across over almost 300 million different consumer electronic devices from Blu-ray players to um, you know smartphones tablets other types of, of CE devices and it's since it's already adopted there the, the technology just needs to be in place to put content in that format and make it that part of the publishing process and so that's what we're doing at Brightcove is we've built in widevine packaging and encryption into the video cloud content ingestion process so once that's turned on our publishers just need to upload their content into video cloud and then it automatically gets wrapped in Widevine. If they have flash access, it gets wrapped in flash access and then gets distributed out to their users. They don't ever, don't ever have to worry about it. It just happens automatically. Well, there's absolutely a platform war continuing. I mean, Flash has kind of, uh, you know, abandoned the mobile environment. We've seen Adobe really retreat from that. And so now you've got a big war between Apple uh, with their iOS platform and Android on mobile uh, handsets and tablets. And then you've got, uh, you know, Microsoft coming in with the Windows 8 tablets and now phones as well uh, with the recent Nokia announcements that are coming on. So they're going to try to challenge, you know, grab some market share there. But that's not all. I mean, it's also in the living room. You've got all these over-the-top boxes, you can be at Roku, or and now you've got the game consoles, you know, Xbox versus, um, you know, the, the PlayStation, and, and then all the smart TV platforms. Each of the smart TV platforms, whether it's Samsung or LG or Panasonic or Sony, have their own platform technologies for how they deliver content and protect content and do monetization. So if you want to hit all of those screens using the, the, the native capabilities of each of those different devices, you've got a very long list of technical challenges. I think that what we're going to see is that Android will continue to grow, and I think Android is pretty much going to become the, 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 the windows of the mobile age, where it has the dominant market share in terms of units shipped. But Apple is going to have the most valuable customers and the most digitally engaged customers. So they have a, a, more, a more minority market share, but in terms of actual content consumption, the Apple devices are going to be in, 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 the, in the lead for some time because you know, Android is becoming the kind of the default choice, and even people who are not really consuming a lot of digital content often have Android phones. The more digital, um, you know, digitally voracious people are using the Apple devices from the data that we see. So I think that that'll, that'll be kind of an interesting um, stalemate that occurs there. Um, I don't think anybody's going to win. I don't think that we're going to be, you know, in a situation where you can just say I'm going to support one or two platforms and that'll be sufficient for any time soon. And so I think multi-screen multi is inherently going to be fragmented for many years to come. Customers are asking about Windows 8. They want to know, you know, what's your plan for supporting it. But because it doesn't really have any market share yet, um, and it's not clear exactly how fast it's going to get market share, particularly on mobile devices and you know, smartphones and tablets, um, everybody's kind of in wait and see mode. Nobody is coming to us and saying, I've got to have Windows 8 support by X, such and such a date. They just kind of want to know what the roadmap is and how things are, are playing out and what the options are. 
um, it's not yet reached a point where it's critical mass. It's very different than the, the iPad and, and you know when that came out. That was a device where people were very certain that it was going to reach dominant market share very quickly and they were, wanted to do anything they could to make sure that they supported it. People are a little bit more reserved about Windows 8 right now, which I think is pragmatic.